I'm thrilled to be here and to talk to you today about stories because I, just like you, I love stories. I love to hear them. I love to read them. I love to tell them. But mainly what I like to do is I like to think them up and I like to write them down and I like to work on them and work on them and work on them. And I like to work on them so much that they become good enough to become books like Squiggly Story, which is the story we're going to read today, or like my newest book, which is not about hockey, but about baseball. It's called The Thing Lenny Loves Most About Baseball. But I like to think up stories and write them down because, because that's my job. I don't, I don't work in a store. I don't drive a bus. I don't, don't uh, drive a subway. don't drive an airplane. I don't work in a factory. I sit here. I look out the window and I make stuff up because I'm, I'm an author and an author is a storyteller. And the thing that I wanted to share with you today, as well as wanting to share a story with you and share some time together, the thing that I wanted to share with you today is the fact that each and every one of you that I can see on the other side of this screen, each of you, and you know this probably already, each of you is a storyteller. Whether you're writing about your sister's tooth that comes out or whether you're writing about hockey, you are storytellers. You do the very same thing that I do. You're sharing your stories by writing them down. And writing down your stories or drawing your stories is not the only way that we can share our stories. Uh, my daughter, whose name is Bella, she shares her stories by singing. My son, Charlie, he loves to share his stories by dancing. Some people share their stories by acting them out. There's a million different ways to share stories. But as storytellers, which all of us are, we share our stories in almost everything we do. If let's say after we're, we spend time together and you're sitting down having dinner tonight and you say to somebody, I, I heard this author talking about stories. Well, you'll be telling a story. When you have conversations with your friends, that's telling a story. Human beings are natural born storytellers. All of us here on the screen, we are all storytellers. And we've been telling stories since the beginning of time. Way back when, before there were Xboxes or computers or laptops or televisions or any of that kind of stuff, at night, people would sit together, they'd sit around fires and they would share stories. And they would talk about the things that made them happy. They would talk about the things that made them nervous. They would talk about the things that they were scared of. And that was the way that they found connection was in sharing their stories. And I kind of think it's the same with stories nowadays is that when we share our stories, we connect with each other, We're, whether it's with your family or your friends or your classroom and ideas for stories. Because as, as storytellers, we, we've got to find an idea for our stories, whether it's hockey or someone in our family, ideas for stories are everywhere. And I have to say, I find the best ideas for stories are the things that I love to do, like play hockey, like watch hockey, like play baseball, or the people in my family, like my kids, like our dog. I just wrote a story about our dog or about things that happen in our neighborhood. There's ideas for stories absolutely everywhere. And what an author does, and I want each of you to show me that you're able to do this, an author reaches way up in the air. So reach way up in the air. You grab hold of an idea, whether it's a hockey game or a tooth falling out or a babysitter doing something silly. You take that idea and you hold it over your heart and you think about that idea. And you think about it and you think about it and you think about it. And what storytellers do is they grow those ideas from a little tiny seed of an idea into a story that's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. But stories are how we connect with each other. And I sometimes think that a story is almost like a lighthouse on a dark stormy night, or like, like a nightlight in the hallway when you wake up and you're not sure what's going on. A story is comforting like that. Now, the story that I'm gonna read to you today well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to read a story called A Squiggly Story. 
And I'm gonna read this to you shortly. And then after that, I'm gonna invite you to get a pencil and a piece of paper or a marker and a piece of paper and to make up stories together and if you want, we can share our stories with each other. And I'm going to try today making up a very short story with just pictures. Now, I, I'll tell you, I don't practice drawing very much, so I'm not a great drawer. But I wanted to show you, and that's part of what Squiggly Story is about, that you can make up stories with things other than words. You can make, it, make them up with pictures or with squiggles or, or however you want. So I'll read this, this, and then we'll do some, some writing together. When I was young, uh, I have two older brothers. And when I was young, before I knew how to read, I used to sit with a book and pretend that I could read. I used to tell my brothers that I could read faster than they could. I would just look, I, I would hold the book, I would look at the book, and I would pretend that I was speed reading. And when my brothers were writing, when they were doing their homework, I would pretend that I could write as well. But I couldn't really write. All I could do was, was draw squiggles and lines and circles. But I was pretending that I was writing. Eventually, my squiggles and my lines and my circles began to make sense. And eventually, I kind of I learned to, to, to read and to write. And I wasn't... I wasn't racing with my with my brothers anymore. I was reading and writing alongside them. And that was one of, for me, when I was growing up, that was a big deal. It was like being invited to play with them when they said, hey, Andy, do you want to sit and read with us? I was so, so happy. And I thought to myself, I want to write a story about learning to learning to write. I want to write a story about a big sister helping their younger sibling who wants to learn how to write a story. And that's how I came up with the idea for Squiggly Story. Before I read Squiggly Story, I'm gonna show you the very first book that I ever wrote. This is the book and it's called Andy's Book. And it's got a red cardboard front, it's got a red cardboard back. This is a really, really old book. I wrote this book in the last century. I wrote this book when I was in kindergarten. And well, actually I was too young to write a story. The teachers printed out phrases and sentences. So this first one here says, my father. And I drew a picture of my dad. You can see he's got a, he's got a blue suit and an orange hat. Now the thing is, my dad never wore hats, but I thought I was gonna be a funny guy by giving him an orange hat. And I worked on this, on this book really, really, really hard. And when I brought it home from school, because we, I did this at school, when I brought it home, I gave it to my mom and she went bananas because she couldn't believe that I had made a book. And here's the thing. Some of you have made books. Once you make a book, you, you, you change from being just a storyteller, which all of us are, into being an author. So I have been an author ever since I made this book. And I've continued to make homemade books uh, ever since then. I've made many, 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 many homemade books. And I give them out for holidays and for birthdays and special occasions. And I've also made the kind of books that you can find in a library or a bookstore like, like Squiggly Story. And I have made 18 of these kind of books that you could find in a library or a bookstore. So I've been very, very busy telling stories and sharing my stories. And now I'm gonna share Squiggly Story. So I'm gonna share my screen and let's, and hopefully we're gonna, um, okay. Just a second here. Hmm.
Okay, no, that's not sharing my, my, just give me a second here. I may have to get some technical assistance. Can you see that? You're good. Yeah, you just need to make it a full screen. There you go. Bingo. Okay, here we go. So this is called a squiggly story. And you can see my name there, just the way on, in the first book that I made, I had my name on it. Well, this has my name and it's got another name. The other name is Mike Lowry and Mike is the illustrator. So what he did is he read my words and he read them over and over and over again. And at a certain point he said, ah, I know exactly how this story ought to look. So it's Mike's pictures and my words. So here we go. My sister loves to read big words and little words, page after page, word after word. And my sister loves to write big words and little words, page after page, word after word. Sometimes I pretend that I can write too. Big letters and little letters, swirl after swirl, squiggle after squiggle. And if you look there, you can see some words. I can see mom, I can see hat, I can see fish, I can see cat, and I can see a very, very powerful word, which is a single letter, and that's the, the letter I. What are you doing, I ask one day, while we're sitting at the kitchen table. I'm writing a story, says my sister. Man, I wish I could write a story, I say. You can, she says. It's easy. Well, how? I know my letters, but, well, I don't know many words. Write what you know, she says. Every story starts with a single word, and every word starts with a single letter. Why don't you start there with a letter? Oh, what's happening here now? Should I press admit? It says someone has entered the waiting room. Okay, here we go. No, now I can't taint, do the. Can you click back onto your screen? Oh, there we go. Brilliant, thank you. So I get my crayons and pencils and a pad of paper and I start to write. I start with a single letter. It's an easy letter. I, that's me. Well, that's a good beginning, says my sister. Now what? What's going to happen? Well, how should I know? Well, it's your story. You're the boss, she says. I, I what? I'm stuck. What happens in my story? I draw a circle. It's a soccer ball. Then I write another letter. I write the letter U. It's you, I say to my sister. I am playing soccer with you. Well, that's great, she says. Where are we playing soccer? Um, maybe we're playing soccer on the beach, I suggest. We've never played soccer on the beach. So I do a bunch of dots for the sand on the beach. Then I make a bunch of Vs. Big V's and little V's, wave after wave in the ocean. Now what? What do you mean? Well, you have a beginning. Now we're in the middle of the story. Something else has to happen so we can get to the end. I'm stuck again. I start doodling. I doodle another V, but this time I doodle it upside down. Oh no, it's a shark. 
It's getting closer and closer. I flip the page to get away from the shark. The next day, I bring my story to school. It's my turn for show and tell. That means I get to sit in Mrs. Singh's chair. Everyone else sits on the carpet ready to listen. Last night, I started to write a story, I say. It's, it's sort of squiggly, but here goes. Once upon a time, there was a brother and a sister, and they loved to play soccer. One day, they had an idea. They decided to play soccer on the beach. So they went to the beach and they played soccer. Then they noticed something coming toward them in the water. It was a shark, a real live shark. And it was getting closer and closer and it was getting bigger and bigger. And well, that's as far as I got. Well, that's wonderful, says Mrs. Singh. What happens next? What about the shark? What about the brother and the sister? I don't know, I'm, I'm stuck. Class, does anyone have an idea? Now there's a boy in the class named Jake. And Jake just doesn't just put up his hand, but he's one of those guys that goes, oh, oh, I do, I do, I do. Maybe one of them kicks the ball and it hits the shark in the head. Then maybe the shark bites the ball with his big pointy shark teeth. Aaliyah offers another idea. Well, what if the shark's name is Squiggles? And what if Squiggles is a vampire shark? And what if she invites the brothers and sister, to, the brother and the sister to ride on her back? And what if they become a vampire family and live forever? Well, vampires can't swim, everyone knows that. Of course they can swim, says Aaliyah. Vampires can do anything. Yeah, but, but, but it's my story. I don't want vampires in my story. Well, if I was writing a story, I'd have lots of vampires. Well, then you should write one. But I like yours. <laughs> that night after dinner, I sit down beside my sister. Her face is buried in a book. I've been thinking about my story all day and well, I still don't know how to end it. Remember, says my sister, you're the author. You can do whatever you want. So. I get my pencil and I start with a bunch of stars. Then I add a few exclamation marks. My sister told me that exclamation marks make things exciting and, and she's right, it is exciting. And I add a couple of slanty lines. What's going on? Asks my sister looking up from her book. Well, it's nighttime, the stars are out, the shark has gone away and we decide to take a walk on the beach. And that's when we discover this giant rocket ship. That sounds cool, says my sister. Then what happens? We hear a voice. It's counting down. 10. Can you all count down at the same time? 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, blast off, not yet, I say, adding one more squiggle. Just before the rocket blasts off, we spy a Martian looking out through the window. The Martian invites us to climb aboard. Wow, that's a great ending, says my sister. Now I have an idea for my next story. It's going to be about a boy who climbs aboard a rocket ship and takes a trip to Mars. And I think I know just how to begin. And the story ends not with any words, but with a picture. So we see the boy and the Martian in the rocket ship on their way to Mars, and who knows what will happen? Because that story is waiting to be told. And that's a story that I'm working on right now. And now I'm going to press this. And there we are back again. What I'd like to do, I hope you all enjoyed that story. What I'd like to do is I would like to show you a couple of things. I would like to show you how easy it is, and you can do this anytime that you want. I want to show you how easy it is to make 
your own book. And you can do this maybe with help from a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle, or maybe a brother or a sister, or, well, maybe you could do it on your own. But it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And what you do is you get a piece of paper and you fold it once. And then you get that piece of paper and you fold it twice. Now, just like in Squiggly Story, when the sister was saying to the brother, if you're the author, you can do whatever you want because you're the boss of the book. If you like folding paper, you can fold it three times. And then what you do is you get your stapler, a handy dandy stapler, and you staple it on along one side. So there, you can do it two times if you want. If you love stapling, you can do it three times because you are the boss. Three times. Then what you do is you get your handy dandy scissors and you cut on the edges where you did not staple. So just to review, I folded, then I stapled along one side. Now I'm, I've got my scissors and I'm gonna staple where I did not fold. So I did not, or where I, sorry, I've got to cut where I did not staple. I did not staple on this side. I did not staple on this side. I did not staple on this side. So I'm cutting on three sides. What do I have from that single piece of paper that I started out with? I have a book. And I have a book with plenty of pages that are just waiting to be filled with letters or numbers or squiggles or words or a story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, does everybody have um, a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen? Can you give a thumbs up if you do? Okay, so what I would like to do is I would like to try together, I wanna to show you how to make a story, but if you don't wanna use words, you don't have to use words. Cause in Squiggle Story, the narrator, he doesn't, he uses lines and squiggles and his imagination. And he tells a story by talking. So he doesn't write his words down. So what I'd like to try to do today is I would like to try writing a little story by using lines and shapes. And I'm gonna show you how you can start with a piece of paper by just drawing a big cross on your piece of paper. That gives us four panels. Now, the, the great thing is, like I say, I, I practice writing all the time. I don't practice drawing very much at all. So, I mean, I don't like to say I'm no good at drawing because I can kind of draw, but it's not something I practice a lot. But I want to show you how even someone like me who, if I try to draw a dog, it's going to look like a cat. If I try and draw a car, it'll probably look like a donkey. Even me, I can do a story by, by squiggling. So I've got the four panels and I'm going to number them. I'm going to number them, number them one, two, three, and four. See how I've done that? There's panel one, panel two, panel three, and panel four. So it's almost like a comic. And I'm going to start. Now you can do whatever you want in your in in your panels. You could draw um, a bird. You could draw yourself. You could draw yourself playing hockey. You could draw whatever you want. But you can draw a different thing in each panel so that it kind of tells a story. What I'm going to show you, and you don't have to do this at all, but I'm going to try and write a story about. Hanukkah, because Hanukkah is coming up very soon. And in this panel, I've drawn two circles and a rectangle. I am going to turn this circle into a frying pan. See there, I've got a frying pan. I'm going to turn the, the next circle into 
Alatka. And I am going to draw, turn the, the rectangle into a candlestick. So just by using two circles and a rectangle, and then playing a little bit with them, I'm beginning to tell a story about Hanukkah. Because Hanukkah is a time when we put latkes in the frying pan and we light Hanukkah candles. So now I am going to draw my frying pan with a latka in it because the latka is frying and I'm gonna make some heat coming off of the latka. And you don't have to be drawing a latka or a frying pan. You can draw whatever you want, but I just wanna show you how easy it can be. And then for my final panel to tell my story of Hanukkah, I'm gonna draw a plate with a latka on it. And on that plate, I've got some applesauce, I've got some sour cream, and the candle is lit. So it's easy peasy to share stories, to make stories with just lines, circles, or with words. You could start a story like this. You could start a story by just writing once upon a time. What happens next? I don't know. What I would love to do is I would love if all of us worked on something for a few minutes, and then maybe if you, if you would like, we can share what the stories that we're drawing and we can tell our stories to each other. And that way we can connect with each other by the stories that we're sharing because that's what storytellers do, is they connect with each other by sharing their stories. So I am going to, I'm gonna work on a story that's kind of about eating latkes, but it's about me eating latkes. So I'm gonna start with the four panels and I'm going to get to work. So let's all get to work for a couple of minutes and then perhaps we can share our stories. It looks like everyone's working very, very hard. I see the green glasses are making full books, not just little stories. Holy to moly, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get closer to the screen so I can see. Oh my gosh, they've got like, it's like a printing factory over there. Oh, <laughs> something else going on. Holy moly. Oh, look at the Blitz girls. Well, Holy cow. There's so much going on. Paige is working away. <laughs> She's working very hard. What are you making, Paige? Oh, I'm making a story about my cat, Fred. <gasps> I, just wrote a, I just wrote a book about a cat. Ooh. You know what the cat's name is? Is it In Fred? my book? It's Bob. Bob, another great cat name. And the book is called Jungle Cat. And, and I, I, it's actually going to be a book. About a, about a cat named Bob. I love that. Oh, well, maybe you should make one about Fred. <laughs> and they can have a crossover. There you go. Oh, that, my God, that would be <laughs> funny. Can Mo the dog get involved in that? Of course, that'll be volume three. Volume three, okay, good. Elon, are you working very hard over there, my friend? Yeah, what are you working on? You wanna hold something up? A monster. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Is it a happy monster or a scary monster? A scary monster. <laughs> Does he have monster powers? I'm going to make them get them, him gone too. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I've been desperate. Dre does out. Oh, so he's a Hanukkah monster. Okay. Is he gonna to come to our Hanukkah party? No, him, I, and some superheroes gonna come. Really? 
are you, you know, you could invent, you could invent a Hanukkah superhero. What would his power be? Or her power? I have not made it yet. Okay. Give well, me some time. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you some, you, you can have as much time as you need. Let the creative process do its thing. We've lost a blitz girl, but oh, this is looking very good. Sweetie, do you want to unmute yourself and tell us what your story is? Right now I'm starting with the villain oh, and yeah. the superhero to save the people who can save I the day. Can I, can, I tell you, can I tell you what oh, I'm making? Sure. It's an emoji story. An emoji story? Which emoji? Wow. Those, the, can I see the drawings again? That is terrific. Wow. That's really good. This is mine. Look at the front, and I'm going to flip the page. Let's see. It. Boom. And now the building fell over. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. That's I'm amazing. not reading when we die, meeting theater. Stop. Do you, do, you, do you guys like making books together? Is it the kind of thing you could spend an afternoon doing? I can tell you what my sisters like doing is going through my old journals. It's sort of like reading a book together. <laughs> they do, they found them under do they read them out? Do they read your journals out to each other? They do, and sometimes they have notes. Um, Oh my gosh. <laughs> they edit it to make for accuracy. <laughs> there's I'm, actually there's actually a reading series, and I can't remember what it's called. Uh, my wife was involved with it, where she read her old camp journals. But it's it's grown ups that read stuff that they oh, wrote when they my were. My sisters young. wanted me to do it. I've heard that of that before. Because I'm <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you should do it. It's so fun. I mean, when I, I did it or I went to see my wife do it and it was at the Bloor Cinema and there was probably a thousand people there listening oh to people gosh. read their journals and it was nothing but laughter. It, <laughs> I mean, it was and good hearted laughter, not bad laughter. I don't know if I need a thousand people seeing what was in the mind of four year old, five year old Ellie, but um, <laughs> Special. My camp, my camp letters were also spectacular. Oh my! Oh, I can <laughs> only imagine. It was a lot of "Bring me home." This is terrible. A boy kissed me on the cheek, but bring me home. Yeah. yeah. Who? Who did you go with to the camp dance? Natan Kramer, guys. Natan. I drew a guy. They're holding these things called creature bound discs. One guy's holding a creature power disc holder, and one guy's holding a creature power disc, the other guy's holding a creature power disc, and then a shoe, a pancake, and a radio. Oh a my shoe. goodness. That a works. pancake and a radio? Can we see? What? What? Can we see it? Oh. Um, making yourself giggle. Yeah, something just popped up. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to show my, I'm trying to draw a picture of me eating, getting ready to eat latkes, but I realize I've made myself look like a latka. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't creative. I was inspired. I found a, a doodle that my son made me do from the last time we read one of Andrew's books. <laughs> We read Bye Bye Butterfly. So I just made the stages of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Oh, that's lovely. Because we read this uh, book every day. Doing nice, Daddy. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Let's see, Lon. Oh, I like that. I do. I do. I am very special, special Drago, the monster trying to shoot. <gasps> the monster's trying to shoot oh the Yeah, and, and, and I got, no, I got the, 
I do the superheroes. Um, wow, that's uh -huh. very wow. That's very, very and the monster get shoot that one. Everybody gonna be dead in him trying to destroy the world. So you gave me an idea. I've I've done it with my the book that I did. I've got a counting book, so it's zero, one, one two, two, three, three, and then I tried to draw a dreidel, and I realized it wasn't a very good dreidel, so I turned it into a rocket ship. Ooh. It's a supersonic dreidel. Uh, yeah. So I you see, see, if you let your mind go, if you if you if you think to yourself, I'm just going to try and be creative. You can fill books, and you can fill pieces of paper, and you can fill you can fill the world with with the things that are in your imagination, and that are in your heart, and it's really really fun to share them. I'm I'm enjoying sharing my stuff with you guys. And I can see everybody. This is good. I, I'm seeing the top of people's heads, which means which means that you're all working. This is fantastic. Is that a flip book? I, I see. Book. Can I here? I have to get close to it. So, oh my gosh! The is Star Man in the club's office? In the club's office is slowly shrinking. <gasps> Whoa! Can I can I see that one more time? Yeah. Wow. That is, that is, that's awesome. And then you can repeat it as many times as you want till it hits the ground. Holy moly. There's a lot you of crazy. You my whole book, which is about like 20 pages. 20? Yeah, literally. You're not making a book, you're making a novel. That is very impressive. Does anyone else, before we have to all go have our dinners, does anyone else have any part of their story they'd like to share with us and with Andrew? This <laughs> is. There's a party going on at the Blitz house. <laughs> I'll share my story. Wow. So this is... Fred goes, oh, Fred flies to Toronto because Fred is in Vancouver right now with my parents. So Fred is thinking he's, he's missing me. And he thinks, ah, maybe I'll go in a plane. And he sees a suitcase and then he gets in the suitcase. And that's all that I've written so far. It's all that I've drawn. Oh my gosh. Is so he going to get on the right plane? I sure hope so. We'll have to see what happens next. See what Fred decides. This is, and that's that's just the way a really good story is, is that the story starts telling itself. You may think that you're beginning to write a story about Fred coming to visit, but really Fred might have, have a different idea about what kind of story it's going to be. <laughs> he might. You never know. Fred might want to go on a tropical vacation to Hawaii. There you go. There you go. Fred would be right. <laughs> I know I don't disagree <laughs> well you guys I want everyone we owe Andrew a huge thank you because I don't know if you know of a very popular storyline which is where there's a damsel in distress and she needs help and a hero comes on a white horse to save her I was the damsel in distress this morning when our original author for today told me she was sick or yesterday and Andrew came in as the hero and he showed up a week early to help us run our program. So I want to give a big thank you to Andrew for coming nice and early to help us out. Thank you. Well, and I, I would like to thank you all, all for, for showing up and for working on your stories together. It's so much fun to be working on stories as a group. And I have, even though we're not sitting in the same room, we are really connected by the stories that we've been making and by the stories that we've been sharing. And I have had a great time. This is really exciting. I'm, I'm actually very inspired. You guys, you might all be in Andrew's next book. You never know, you never know. 
Well, everyone, if you have, is, does anyone have anything else they want to share before we all go have our yummy dinners? Oh, there we go. Izzy has something. Drawing, now they're transforming into birds and a, and, and, and unposing animals, and then they're going to kick the melon's butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is very so exciting. going to end up holding a banana like he <laughs> already did. <laughs> I love you. You're awesome. Great. All right, you guys. Well, this was so much fun. I hope you guys all had a lot of fun as well. You guys can find Andrew's books all over the internet and bookstores and libraries and McDonald's. And um, McDonald's. Kosher McDonald's. Yes. Um, and we're all going to be meeting again next week right here in your own living rooms at 5.30 with another author to do lots more storytelling. And I hope you, oh, yes, sweetie. We have a hand up. And a foot up. People can do anything. I love that. That's awesome. You guys. Move your arm. <laughs> no, I will not. <laughs> Move it. I'm going all right, my friends, I think that's it for now. Thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you all soon. Thank, Thank you. Have a good Thank dinner you. and a great evening. Bye. 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 Bye.